In this session, we will discuss some of the questions pertaining to active implement guidance and its uses. What is active implement guidance? Why use active implement guidance? What equipment is required for active implement guidance? And what types of steerable equipment? What is active implement guidance? Active implement guidance utilizes some type of mechanism to steer the implement independent of the tractor, unlike passive guidance that steers the tractor offline in order to keep the implement on the AB guidance line. Why use active implement guidance? There are three main advantages of any implement guidance system. Number one, eliminating or reducing implement drift. Number two, staying in the zone for strip till or spraying in row. And number three, reducing operator stress. What equipment is required for active implement guidance? A 2630 display, a John Deere 4640 universal display, or a 4600 command center. For the receiver, we can use either a Starfire 3000 or a Starfire 6000 with one installed on the machine and one on the implement. For activations on the receiver, we need SF2, SF3, or RTK on the machine receiver. SF1, SF2, SF3, or RTK activated on the implement receiver. We can also use shared signal, which will share the RTK level accuracy from the machine to the implement. Therefore, we do not need as high a level of accuracy on the implement. We also need an application controller with implement steer activation plus any necessary harnessing. Types of steerable equipment. First, we have coulters on a row crop planter. The coulters engage the soil and do the steering to hold the planter on the line. Steerable axles on a potato planter basically do the same thing as they steer to keep the planter on the guidance line. And a protractor hitch this mounts on the drawbar of the tractor and operates via two hydraulic cylinders that swing the drawbar side to side. The types of steerable equipment. First, we have a ProTracker hydraulic swing drawbar that is available for 9000 series RT tractors. Second, we have steerable tracks available from Gramlo Limited or Camoplast. These are available for 1770, 1775, and most models of DB planters. And third, we have a steerable rubber tires that are original equipment manufacturer on DB planters specially ordered. For more information about active implement guidance, contact your local CNB Precision Ag Consultant. And thank you from CNB Operations. Hey, hi, Dwayne Simon with CNB Operations, serving the Gettysburg, Selby, and Roscoe, South Dakota locations. Today we're at a customer's location at Roscoe, South Dakota, and we're talking about active implement guidance and steerable tracks on his planter. Today we're gonna to talk about active implement guidance, and I'm gonna go through the display and show some of the setup and calibrations that are done with, to uh, get active implement guidance working. So in order to access this, we're gonna to go to the ISO VT button here, and that'll take us into all of the ISO products that come into the, this display. So I have to scroll down and find my universal CAN controller, otherwise called an application controller. So we have several things to set up in here. First one is we need to set up our which SCV we're going to use. Deer has set this so we can use SCV number one or number three. So we need to choose which one we're gonna do. So in this application, we've got number one already picked. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'll get back out of that. The other thing that we have on this screen is our extend and our retract thresholds for the steering cylinders on the steerable tracks. And those are set so that they operate nice and smooth. Uh, it's an infield calibration setup. Uh, so it takes a lot of driving moving the tracks back and forth until you get them to operate side to side at the same speed, same time. Uh, I like to set those so that from 
full lock to full lock takes somewhere around 20 seconds. That way we get a nice smooth operation. So the other buttons here, uh, implement steer main is one of our main setup buttons. We get some information on here. It tells us right here that we've, we're using SCV-1. Uh, right now it's telling us no GPS because we are indoors. We can't see the satellites. Coming down here, we got our track error, and that's in inches. That'll tell us as we're going through the field how far off the planter is from the tractor from the GPS AB line. Uh, normally we want to see that at zero, but we can see that up to, in this application, 16 inches, maybe a little more sometimes. Uh, wheel angle, that's telling us how many degrees the tracks are turned side to side. Line sensitivity tracking, that is basically how quick the system is going to react to an offline error. So uh, there are settings listed in the operator's manual that are recommended starting points and those generally are pretty close. Uh, line sensitivity accumulated, uh, that needs to be about 10% or so of the line sensitivity tracking. Um, so we'll move on from there. Oh, tractor follow off. We can, we can also turn that on so that say we're driving down the side of a field, our opening pass, and we just want the planter to follow where the tractor drove versus following its own line. We could turn tractor follow on for normal operation in the field. We're going to leave tractor follow off. So the planter does its own line independent of the tractor. And we'll come back into here to our implement steer setup. And we have a wheel angle setup. Now this is, we're going to set max right, max left, and center. So we want to go and turn the tracks full right and set it, then go full left and set it, and then set center position. The really important one here is the center. Uh, there, I like to get out and use a tape measure and measure that my tracks are perfectly centered or if we're working with a protractor hitch, make sure it's perfectly centered because that's what's going to tell the planter where it is in relationship to the AB line. So that's very important. Our implement GPS offsets. If we notice that the planter is always pulling off to one side or the other versus staying centered, we can come in here and tell it that we need to move it like in this case, uh, we have an offset left of one inch. If the planter was tracking to the right, we just tell it that we're tracking to the right by how much. So the GPS offset forward, that's telling us how far our, our uh, receiver is from the axle. So that's 68 inches there. So now steer control setup. So wheel angle sensitivity, that's another one of the uh, functions that deals with how quickly the tracks move when they steer. Um, we have our engagement. We can turn it on with the resume switch for auto track, or we can set it for auto track plus implement work state so that the auto steer active implement guidance will not turn on until the planter is in the ground and it's starting to record and then it turns the active steering on. So now we have some of our other setup functions, the control. So here's where I, I talked about earlier where we set it up for SCV one or three. So we need to set it on implement steering. If we go in here, we'll see all the different options that the application controller can do. And uh, they're all activation based. So we have active implement guidance in here for implement steering. So that's what we've chosen here. We're using SCV number one. We're not using SCV number three. So that one stays turned off. And again, our SCV thresholds. I talked earlier how to set those. Once that's all set up, as we are operating in the field, we just click number one 
a head till it clicks. We don't want to go all the way to float. We click it ahead one click there. That activates the system. So once it uh, goes active and we're moving, then the tracks will start steering. Okay, so there we've gone over the operation of active implement guidance. We were in the tractor cab, did set up and operation there. We did some field work, saw how the tracks work there. So with that, I thank you. And from CNB Operations, thanks for attending.